is at the height of its power. Hitler's armies are charging through the heart of the Soviet Union towards the oil fields of Asia. One last obstacle remains. A city on the Volga where the fate of the world is being decided. Stalingrad.
who are only sending you to your death. The Third Reich is not your enemy. The enemy is bloodthirsty Stalin and his Bolsheviki gang.
Political officer, second class, 21st infantry. <laughs> On this day, September the 20th, 1942, a young shepherd boy from the Urals. Arrived in the city of Stalingrad on the banks of the Volga. His name is Vasily Zaitsev. And like thousands before him, he came to answer Comrade Stalin's call. Armed only with a rifle, he quickly made the fascist invader realize that from now on, he would be punished for every step he took in the motherland. That from here on, the only way was back. What do you say? I think Comrade Commissar has been over generous. Germans engulfed us. They have artillery, aircraft, tanks. And me, what did I have? The sacred duty to resist. I have to report to the boss. Perhaps you'd prefer to avoid the red tape. <laughs> the name of the boss. It's more than a city, it's a symbol. If the Germans capture this city, the entire country will collapse. Now, I want our boys to raise their heads. I want them to act like they have balls. I want them to stop shitting their pants. That's your job. 
as political officers, I'm counting on you. You. What's your suggestion? Shoot all the other generals who have retreated. And their chiefs of staff too. Make some examples. Deport the families of the yes, deserters. Give them hope. Here, the men's only choice is between German bullets and ours. But there's another way. The way of courage. The way of love of the motherland. We must publish the army newspaper again. We must tell magnificent stories. Stories that excel sacrifice, bravery. We must make them believe in a victory. We must give them hope, pride, a desire to fight. Yes. We need to make examples, but examples to follow. What we need are heroes. Do you know any heroes around here? Yes, comrade. I know one. <laughs> No! You're not dreaming! It's your name! We can hit the front page! I haven't changed the word! Do you have any idea what this means? It's not the back page, it's not the second page, it's the front page. The front, front page! They're going to reprint our article everywhere, in the Caucasus, in the Crimea, even in the Urals. <laughs> Good morning, Stalin himself. will be sitting over breakfast, reading my words, memorizing your name. We're famous for city. Khrushchev loved the article. He's promoted me to the general staff. And you, to sniper division. Well, that's good. It's very good. It's very good. It's great. It's very it's great. great! It's great! Both it's great! It's for both of us because we did it together. <laughs> together. Although, admittedly, I did all the hard work. Oh, yeah. You know, you're very lucky I can't fight back. Why is that? Because Khrushchev told me to make sure nothing happens to you. you, you you're too important. I'm too valuable. Yes. Be careful of my, be careful of my glasses, please. <laughs> They're new. Sorry, sir. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm famous! I'm famous! No, we're famous! I'm famous! Vasily, the young shepherd from the Urals, killed his 12th German officer. He's seven wolves, now he shoots fashion. Hey, Vasily's Einstein shot his 23rd colonel. He's an example to us hey, all. Hey, Vasily's Einstein killed his 32nd he German officer.
ghastly sight, Seth. My mother makes the best potatoes and bacon in town. Sounds good. When she sees you, she won't believe her eyes. How many today? Only two. And the last one? Why didn't you shoot him? He was only a foot soldier. It wasn't worth giving away my position. Bless you. We know how much we owe you. We pray for you every day. Every evening we listen to them talk about you on Radio Moscow. Thanks. You've certainly managed well down here. My parents used to store furniture down here before the war. Sasha, drop that right now. It's loaded. This way, Comrade Commissar. Thank you, Comrade. Good evening. Comrade Zaitsev. <laughs> My God, where does all this mail come from? From all over the country, Mrs. Flebov. From all over. This one's from the workers of the Kuzmas. They want to name their mine after Vasily. Right, let's start with the miners. Come on, let's get to work. Dear comrades from the Kuzbas, Kuzbas, I thank you for your letter of praise. Praise. R-A-I-S-E. And I hope that I can live up to your expectations. A-G-I-O-N-S. Expectations. You're interested in German literature, Mrs. Fleet. It's all right, it's our neighbor. Right, where were we? Tanya. Expectations. We have guests. Your offer to name. You. It's for silly Zaitsev. I, I saw your picture in the paper. Thank you for everything you're doing. And this is his friend, Commissar... Danilov. Danilov. Danilov's like a daughter to me. She used to take care of Sasha when I worked at the factory. She even taught him German. All these books are hers. Oh, they're yours. She studied German at the university. Which university? Moscow. 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 Shouldn't we, uh... Yes, let's continue. Your offer to name your mind after me is a great honor. H O N. Yes, I know. Mm. Honor. Oh, very good. Shouldn't we, uh, should we try and make the point that I'm not the only one fighting? Mm. Mm, no, that, that, that's, that's an excellent, excellent idea, Mr. Excellent. We can take it even further, though. Oh, yeah, we can take it further. Your battle for the production of coal is as worthy as mine. There's uh, no K in coal. Just, just, just one. 
Oh, oh tell me if I'm going too fast. <laughs> no, you're not going you sure? too fast. I, I just thought, is there any other improvements? Why don't you get some rest? These letters can wait until tomorrow. We should carry on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not tired. Thank you, Mrs. Philippa. These people took the trouble to write to us. Tomorrow, we may not be around to write back. <laughs> I was expecting someone else, certainly not someone so prestigious. I imagine you have your reasons for getting yourself involved in this hellish situation. My army is not designed for this kind of fighting. Yesterday, yet again, I had to promote 25 sergeants to replace the officers shut down by the sharpshooters. Those snipers are demoralizing my people. This city is no more than a heap of ruins. But the Fuhrer is persisting. He has made it a personal matter between Stalin and himself. Well, we should trust the Fuhrer's instinct. He always managed to lead us to victory. We shall be back home for Christmas. How are you going to go about finding this young Russian? I'll fix it so that he's the one who finds me. Vasily. Vasily. Come on. Time to get up. What? They have a problem in the department store sector. They need us. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bye, Comrade Commissar. Thank you for your hospitality, Mrs. Filipov. You can borrow whatever you like. I'm not sure what they would say to me at headquarters if I came back with an armful of girl to insure. There's some marks, too. You were assigned to civil defense at the 12th district? No, I volunteered. It's such a coincidence meeting you like this. Comrade Khrushchev was telling me just yesterday how desperately we're in need of operators who speak German. I can't. Our militia is responsible for all the people in this neighborhood. We're already desperately short of men. We can take care of that. We'll give you a dozen soldiers for everyone that speaks German. I'd rather stay and fight. Serving the headquarters is fighting. You'd be far more useful there. You stay here. You cover us, right? We go.
move back. receives a new sniper's rifle, a Moisin Megant 7.62 with 3.5 power PU telescope, pride of precision of Soviet production. I've seen that rifle close up. Have you? I even touched it. I know him well for silly sights, Seth.
everything about you. His name is Koenig. Major Koenig. They've sent him here to, to find you. At first we weren't sure if the information was reliable. It seems he's come all the way from Berlin to stop you. Calls them so many sleepless nights, they send their top marksmen after you. So, what do we know about him? He's a major in the Wehrmacht. He's director of the sniper school in Zossen. Kulikov studied under him at Zossen before the war. He knows all his tricks. From now on, he'll go with you everywhere. A nobleman from Bavaria, once dear. Against the shepherd boy from the Urals who poaches wolves. <laughs> it's more than a confrontation between two nations. It's the essence of class struggle. I'm glad you're so happy. He had all the advantages. Next time you'll be even. No one shoots like you, Vasily. Let's see if they're ready for you next door. Hello. You look very smart in your new uniform. <laughs> Make sure they don't take it back once you've finished. Uh, they probably will. I've heard the rumour about the German, and I wanted to wish you luck. I'll need it. From what Conrad Danilov tells me, you're going to win. Tell us, how many fascists are you killed Proudly today? challenged by the best sharpshooter in Germany. It's a sign the Germans are starting to shit their pants. Go on, my boy. Tell us how are you going to deal with him. All right, or no? One more question, no. please. Tell it to the boss. He likes good hunting stories. Look at him with pride. He's looking at you. The whole country is looking at you. Give me, forgive me, Grandma. 
So it's not the wolf that chooses the hunting ground, but the hunter. But I'm sure your grandfather taught you that. Except, in this case, I'm the game. First. No, no. We take it in turns. Next time it's your turn to go first. And then it's you, the lodger. These are new pants. I just took them off my captain from the 251st yesterday. Sixteen months I spent in Germany at the school in Zossen. Of course, those were the days when we were friends with the crowds. When our Joseph and their Adolf were walking hand in hand. Here to the wire, 160 meters, right? Stalin who sent me there. Don't bring our glorious leader into your treachery. Confess, spy bastard, confess. And bang. Bang, bang, bang. Well, there wasn't a sickle, but there was a hammer. And bang. Knocked out all my teeth. That's right, boy. I have no illusions. That's the land of socialism and universal bliss for you. Hey, it's your repair guy. I got him. So 
about soup time, isn't it? I'm going. Well, get a move on for Lodger. Yeah? And try not to spill it all on your way back, you Marxist bastard. Is the enemy sniper activity reported during the past 24 hours in Asia? Two sentries shot in the train station sector, one artillery observer in the northern sector, one lieutenant from the 24th Panzer Division in the factory sector, three telephone repairmen in the workers' housing sector. They also tell me, we have just taken a prisoner who may interest you. I hope he's still able to speak. Excuse me, sir? Nothing. Thank you. So tell us, Voladia. Which building is he in? There is no way I know that. He moves around all the time. He jumps from one to the next. On which floor? I don't know. We'll see about that. Undress him. Put him in one of our uniforms. Da krieg ich schon, du alte Rotzen da, oder ich zahl dich ab. his target. Major Koenig sees him. Aims for his helmet. Fires. Reveals his position. And is shot in turn. Because Major Koenig isn't there. Don't you think that was strange? That last one. They sent him out to get shot like the others. It's not natural. Not without artillery, without trying to cover him. No, no, I'm the one of those stupid. They don't give a shit about telephone guys. I mean, it's like us with the Ukrainians. They'd never bother a major over a few dead grunts. Tomorrow, we'll kill us some generals. Whose turn is it? Mine, I think. Oh, you're 
You're such a cheater. You can't fool Papa Kulikov. No, 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 no. It's my turn to go first. And it's your turn to get a hole in your britches. victory. This sniper business has been dragging on too long. What's that little fella of yours up to? He's probing Comrade Khrushchev. He's testing the German for weaknesses. He's meticulous in his preparation. Vodka is a luxury we have. Caviar is a luxury we have. Time is not. He's aware of the Kumbi Khrushchev. We both are. I assure you, he will succeed. Good. It seems your destinies are entwined. reception the other day, I thought Mrs. Filipov might like it. Um, shall we throw the first piece of it? There's plenty more, if you're hungry. You're Jewish, aren't you? Well, there's nothing in our religion that says you can't eat sturgeon. My father had a premonition all this would happen. You mean the war? understood that the hatred of the Jews ran deep. He was saving up to buy some land in Palestine. He said it was the only land that we truly belonged in. The only land we had a duty to defend. He insisted I learnt to use a rifle. I learnt to shoot. I know that in times of war, personal feelings should be put aside, but I have a favor to ask you. Of course, anything you want. I want to be reassigned. What's happened, Tanya?
Il chante son nom. Il chante son nom, même s'il est en train de chanter. Il chante son nom sur le run. C'était un chant impossible. Je n'ai jamais vu rien comme ça. Tu as promis que les gens ont une victoire, je ne peux pas délivrer. I don't stand a chance against this man. You mustn't talk like that, Vasily. What if I told you we'd found a way to track his movements? We've got someone, Vasily. Someone close to him passing us information. Next time, you will be one step ahead of him. I promise. to him than anyone else on earth. You see his face through the sight. You see whether he's shaved that morning or not. You can see whether he's married by, you know, whether he has a wedding ring. It's not like just firing at a distant shape. It's not just a uniform. It's a man's face. Those faces don't go away. They come back and they just, they get replaced by more faces. Did Dana Love ask you to tell me this? He likes you very much. I think he'd try anything to change your mind. Did he tell you why I asked for the transfer? No. This morning a list arrived at headquarters. It was a list of civilians who'd been rounded up and sent to Germany in a convoy that left Stalingrad three weeks ago. My parents were amongst them. After 30 kilometers, the German soldiers stopped the train and forced everyone out. In the middle of a bridge, they bound them together two by two, mothers with daughters, husbands and wives. They lined them up against the railing and then they fired a single shot at each pair to save bullets. It worked. The bodies of the ones who died Drag the others under the water. I know they died together. They would have never let themselves be separated. I know how he leaves the shelter. 
He goes to the tractor factory. The tractor factory is big. I know exactly where. He crawls through a gutter under a grate where the vats are. Then he goes out from the workshop. In between the two, there's a place where he's in the open. It's under a long iron footwalk.
you go that way. I'll go around this way. Okay. Vasily. Thank you. 
keep your head down. Tell me where he is. Stay into that pipe, Tanya. Stay in. Stay in. Get your head in. Slow down. Don't shoot. He's over there. said he'd be nearly there. He's very clever. Tell me about him. Why was it his grandfather father's dead. His mother too. Does he talk about his father? No, he didn't know him. Did he go to school? He knows how to write. He answers lots of letters. Hmm. Is it girls who write to him? Everyone writes to him. Is there a girl he loves in his village? Not in his village, here. Does she love him? Yes. Because he's handsome. Because he's brave. And she is very beautiful. I know her well. She's from my neighborhood. She went to the university. And they are handsome together. Later, the two of them will get married. At least, I think so. And you, Sasha? Why are you helping the Germans? Because they're stronger. Because they're going to win the war. And because you like chocolate. Hold these people. 
people here know they're going to die. So each night when they make it back, it's a bonus. Excuse me. <laughs> so every cup of tea, every cigarette, becomes a little celebration. Because for a lot of us, it may be our last night. It's just something you have to accept here. Everyone has their time. In the forest, the wolf lives for three years, the donkey for nine. <laughs> that's, that's got to be a problem from the Urals. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. The donkey lives longer because he's more useful. It makes absolute sense. There aren't any donkeys in the forest. <laughs> you made it up. So, I'm a donkey. People like you and none of have to survive this. People have read books, had education. We'll need you when the war's over. But if you survive, what will the useless, the silly sights have to do then? I want to work in a factory. My granddad took me to a factory once. There was this man there, high up on a, on a footwalk. And he wasn't wearing blue like the others. The people he was supervising over, they didn't really, really understand what they were doing. But for him, for him up there, it was simple, it was clear. And I thought one day, I could be that man. Sad to have a dream you know won't happen. Why shouldn't it? You'll outlive us all. Hmm. You'll be the oldest donkey in the forest. Fifty meters stand between the Germans and the Volga. Today, the whole world is watching these 150 meters. They are watching Stalingrad, the capital of the war. Your friend, Tanya. Have you seen her? She stays over there now with the snipers. Tell the Major we're sending in all our sharpshooters to support the attack on the factory. Tell him the silly will be there.
need to talk to you. Sure. Down the log. You have to stop writing about me. I'm not going to get him because I'm not good enough. Sooner or later, he's going to find me. He's going to kill me. I've warned you before not to talk like this. This time it's different. You've built me up and up into someone I'm not. I can't carry that weight anymore. I want to fight. I want to fight, just as a regular soldier. I understand. The thing is, Vasily, I'm not a regular soldier. You're an extraordinary soldier. No, I'm what you've made me. Nothing more. are preparing another offensive in the city center. The propaganda battle is crucial for morale. We, we need you more than ever. Sasha, hold on. Sasha! Tell him what you know, Sasha. Hello, Sasha. There was dust on Major's boots. Sasha has the Major convinced he's gone over to the other side. I don't need to tell you the risks he's taking. Dust was yellow. There's only one place where there's dust like that. In the back of the chemical factory, a big heap on the tracks. Well done. Sasha, wait for me outside then. Down along. Hmm? You had no right to use him. No, I, I didn't use him, Vasily. He did it of his own accord. You know why? Because he believes in you! Tomorrow morning, we're going to take back the chemical factory. Sasha's informed the major you'll be there. So now you know where you have to wait for him. In the middle of an assault. I'm following orders. I suggest you do the same. Now I'm aware of the risks. You'll be fine. Sasha. 
You're playing a very dangerous game. I want you to win. See that? Keep going on the river. It's safe for a while.
He's dead. We found this on his corpse. Your reason for being here has ceased to exist. Pardon me, Herr General. But I, I do not believe... There's a plane bound for Berlin tomorrow evening. You will be on it. Until then, I must ask you for your dog tags. Imagine how Russian propaganda would profit from your death. If you fall, you will fall unknown. You've already had a near miss. Also, please take this war merit cross. It was awarded posthumously to a lieutenant of the 116th Infantry Division who fell here during the first days of the battle. He was my son. If the landing is captured, everything's lost! Come here! What did I tell you? You've been playing your fiddle too much! If it's confirmed that he's dead, we're sunk! Well, you're sunk! It isn't true. It was intercepted from their staff headquarters. What do they have to do? Dangle his body in front of our men? They're lying. That's good. Very good. Write it then. Vasily Zaitsev is not dead. This is what he had for breakfast this morning. This is a picture of him reading today's newspaper. You're the poet. What? You won't give up the riverbank. I don't care if you've lost half your men. Lose the other half. But lose yourself. Is he back? He should be back soon. The German attack cut the lines, that's why he's late. Come and go outside. I wrote to my mother about you. She wanted me to tell you that once this war was over, if there's anything you needed, anything at all, our family would be there for you. You know I'm here for you. They're saying Vasily is dead. Vasily Zaitsev will never see his loved ones again. Because Zaitsev is dead, you don't have to hide it. There's no shame in it. You're Russian like he is. Don't listen to that. It's just propaganda. He isn't dead. And do you know why? Because I haven't killed him yet. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Only you, because I know I can trust you. But you must swear to me that you won't tell another soul. I found a terrific spot. It's by the exit from the train station. I'll hide in the water tower. Tomorrow, I'll wait for him there. You'll see. He'll be there. He always is.
also want you to swear to me that from now on you'll stay home where you belong. You swear? Yes. Good. We know he's alive. We know he won't fail us. We know because he is a part of us now. Vasily is eternal. Where have you been? We've looked everywhere for you. Oh, didn't you hear? I was dead. At least, noble sniper Zaitsev. Vasily was dead. The real one. Me. I was asleep. And I missed my chance. Then, I was curled up in a corner hiding from a man who wants to kill me. I'll talk to Khrushchev. He'll send you back to your artificial. Where's Tanya? She's at the shelter. I've been to the shelter. I told you you weren't dead. The Major said so. He said the other Germans were lying. He told me you were waiting for him at the station. Vasily. We've only just met. I prayed for the first time since I was a little girl. And when I opened my eyes, Sasha was standing there waiting to give me the good news. I think he loves you even more than I do. To the proper military authority. I'm calling to the Commandant's attention the recent changes noticed in the attitude towards fighting of soldier Vasily Zaitsev. He has attempted on several occasions to escape his duties, voiced doubts on the chances of our victory, and made defeatist comments in public. The inexplicable duration of his duel with the Nazi sharpshooter can only be explained by his lack of belief in the communist ideal. Good morning, Sasha. Once again, he knew exactly where to find me. Don't you think that's strange? 
the part for me only you knew. I don't hold it against you, Sasha. You've done a very brave thing. You've chosen your camp, I respect that. But it isn't my camp. We're both soldiers. We're both enemies. So I, I know you understand. I'm annoyed with you, little Sasha, for not staying at home as I made you swear to do. I'm annoyed with you for obliging me to do what I'm going to have to do. I've never seen anyone frown so much in their sleep. And have you been watching me? All night. You've been snoring away happy for hours. I don't snore. I'm not leaving. This is my home. This is my Sasha's home. I can't leave. I have to tell you something, Mrs. Filippo. Something very difficult to understand. It's 
It's about Sasha. He's gone over to the Germans. He's betrayed his country. He's with the enemy now. He won't be coming back. Oh my God. He's become a traitor. The poor little thing. What has he done? So he's going to stay over there? Yes. He's going to stay over there. I shouldn't be saying this probably, Commissar, but maybe it's for the best. If the Germans have worm, he'll be safe. I know that's wrong, but perhaps he's made the right choice. create a society that was equal, where there'd be nothing to envy your neighbor. But there's always something to envy. A smile, a friendship, something you don't have and want to appropriate. In this world, even a Soviet one. They will always be rich and poor. Rich in gifts. Poor in gifts. Rich in love. 
fall in love. Tanya isn't coming back. She's dead, Vasily. She was cut down by shrapnel. It was quick. I don't think she even saw it coming. She was on her way back to you. As soon as she had seen Mrs. Philippe off to the boats. She was coming back for you. <laughs> she was right. You're a good man, Miss Lee. I want to help you, Vasily. Let me do one last thing. Something useful for a change. Let me show you where the Major is. No, don't do that. Don't do that! <laughs> Thank you.
Is her name. Yes, yes, this is our address, but she's we not here. We don't have her anymore. But this is the address of this place. So she has obviously been here. She wrote to me. Times in the books, but she's uh, not here. Believe me, there is no Tanya Chernova. Oh, I can't help you. Thank you. 